Hey, welcome to Zach Sector. Yes, you can game on a PC without a graphics card. If you can afford a graphics card right now, or you want to build a new computer now and want to wait for the next generation of graphics card later, fear not. Today, we're going to be running some benchmarks to see just how far you can take your processor's onboard graphics when it comes to PC gaming. Now, don't expect any crazy results like 60 frames per second on Ultra, but let's just see how far you can take it. The results may surprise you. So, let's get into it. Today, we're going to be testing with my Intel i7 4790K. You may not have the exact processor that I have, but Intel includes the same onboard graphics on many different chips. For example, the popular i5 4690 and the i7 4790K have the same exact Intel HD 4600. Now you will experience slightly different results than mine, just keep in mind that this video is just to show what you can do without a graphics card. In my desktop computer, I am running an i7 4790 90K, which has an Intel HD Graphics 4600 and 16 gigabytes of DDR3 1866 RAM. I will be completely removing my graphics card for these tests. Okay, now that that's settled, let's get into these benchmarks. The games that I have chosen for these benchmarks are games that most of you guys are playing. I stole this list from Twitch's top stream games and also Steam's stat page. The games are Grand Theft Auto 5, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Dota 2, Team Fortress 2, and Ark Survival Evolved. Before we get started, please note that I'm absolutely terrible at all these games as I've only played them for a limited amount of time. Check my Steam profile for proof. If you guys want to record your own PC gameplay or benchmark your PC games, make sure you click here for a Fraps tutorial or here for an Nvidia Shadowplay tutorial. Seriously, here or here? Go. Keep in mind that the in-game footage that you're watching is with the exact settings that I tested with. I had to record this gameplay with Fraps instead of Shadowplay because I disabled my Nvidia GPU. The first game that I tested is one of the PC Master Race's favorites, CSGO. Please don't let my lack of skill against the bots deter you from this video. I never played this game and I only tested it today because it's super popular. I pushed all the settings I could to medium and turned off anti-aliasing in 1080p. This resulted in a smooth 60 64 frames per second, but I know this isn't considered smooth by top level competitors. The video you're seeing now is a little choppy, but it was much smoother before recording. The second game I tested is also one of the most played games on PC right now, Dota 2. I used the basic setting option and moved the slider towards the faster side, but not all the way, and stayed in 1080p. As you can see, the graphics weren't crazy good, but they were still silky smooth at 53 frames per second. As you can also see, I'm absolutely terrible at Dota 2 and I know idea what I was doing. Please don't judge me for my lack of skill, I'm just here to make videos for you guys. The third game I tested was Team Fortress 2. I think this is a game that really gets my point across with what you can do without a graphics card. The first settings I used were the recommended settings that the game automatically picked for me. As you can see right here, most of the settings are set to high but with no anti-aliasing. With these settings I ran an offline practice round with 78 FPS. This was silky smooth and very enjoyable. These settings are perfectly fine to run the game with, but I just decided to crank them up a bit to really test the processor. These are the settings that I ran for the second test. I added 4 times MSAA and upped the high dynamic range setting. The graphics look pretty good in this setting and I was still able to maintain 42 FPS. Team Fortress 2 is definitely playable with just a processor. Arc Survival Evolve was definitely a tough one to run without a graphics card. Here in the 1080p benchmark, we get around 16 FPS with every single setting set to low. The experience wasn't that enjoyable, but if you really want to play this game with your friends or try it out, you still can without a graphics card. I had no problem killing some other dinos with my T-Rex. When I lowered the resolution down to 720p, the graphics didn't take a huge hit and we got a nice boost up to 24 FPS. I personally think I'd rather play this game in 720p with the high Higher frame rates. Let me know in the comment section which one you would pick, or if you wouldn't even run this demanding of a game without a graphics card. GTA 5 was a similar story with Ark Survival. Here in the 1080p benchmark, I had to turn down every single setting to either the lowest or completely off. As you can see, the graphics aren't nearly as bad as they were in Ark, but the game still only ran at 16 frames per second. Here in the 720p benchmark, we got a more respectable 34 FPS. This was definitely playable and the graphics didn't look that bad. Who would have thought that you can get 30 plus frames per second in GTA 5 without a graphics card? As you can see, these highly popular and lower graphical games that everybody wants to play 
definitely don't need a graphics card. If you want to just play games like Dota 2, Counter-Strike, Hearthstone, save your money and just use your processor's onboard graphics. Just make sure that your processor has one. Well, I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you want to see me benchmark more games without a graphics card, make sure you drop a comment down below. I love creating these types of videos because it gives me a great excuse to play video games. Please drop a like down below if you want to see my channel grow. And as always, thank you for watching and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.